Hey, it's Mr. K doing a video for AP Physics 2. I'm going to try to do more of these, make them more common. Uh, so hopefully I can fill these folders up. First off, we are going to do a circuit that is a little bit out of the ordinary from what you're used to. It is a kind of a compl complex circuit. It has two batteries, multiple resistors, current's going to flow in multiple directions. And so we're going to do our best to try to solve this one. Uh, there will be a little bit of math involved in this, and for that I'm going to try to fast forward the video. So. Uh, if you really want to see it, you can slow it down, but that's just going to make the video a bit long. Uh, here we have a 10 volt, a 20 volt battery, a 50, 40, and 20 ohm resistor. And to solve this, we're actually going to use these two rules. Uh, they're Kirchhoff's rules. One is the loop rule, which, which says for a closed loop, the total voltage will be zero. And the junction rule, it says anything into a junction should be equal to anything out of a junction. Just conservation of charge, conservation of mass, stuff like that. We're also going to use Ohm's law. Ohm's law is V equals IR. The voltage is equal to the current times resistance, or the potential difference is how we should really say it, is equal to the current and the resistance that it has to go through. And so for this, we will first off assign some currents. So with batteries, we usually like to say that the current comes out of the top of the battery, the long side goes into the bottom. Uh, that might not be the case, and if we have that totally wrong, the math should show us that it would, it would be a negative current there. And so just in case you assign a direction to the current and it is wrong, then it'll just be a negative in your numbers. Uh, current come in, comes in, current comes in, it will go over here, which means these two currents should equal the sum, or the sum of these two currents would equal this one right here. Let's give these a name. Let's call these two currents coming in I1. Let's call this one I2, and we'll call this one I3 just so we can set up an equation off the bat. Junction rule would say that the current I1 plus the current I2 is equal to the current I3. So current flow plus current flow equals current flow. Uh, then we apply the loop rule. The loop rule says for a closed loop, we have a total voltage of zero. And so what we're gonna see is we have three closed loops here. We have a big one on the outside. We have a top one and we have a bottom one. Uh, I'm only gonna deal with the top one and the bottom one. The big one on the outside, if you notice, the current actually does flip direction. And it's gonna be a little tricky to approach that one. So for right now, we're just gonna ignore that outside loop. We're gonna do the top loop and the bottom loop. So focusing on the top loop, I'm gonna choose the direction, which is gonna be the direction of the current overall. So if we look, my current is gonna be in a clockwise fashion. So I'm gonna say the top loop, we're gonna go around clockwise, whereas on the bottom loop, we're gonna do a counterclockwise direction for that. And you'll see the point in just a second. So with the top loop, I'm gonna start off with the battery. And we're gonna say that the battery is providing 10 volts of potential difference to start off. Uh, we're gonna run through a resistor here and what we know is that the voltage or the potential difference of a resistor is gonna be dependent upon the current and the resistance of whatever you're running through. So we're gonna say 10 minus I, that's gonna be I1, and then R, that's gonna be 50, okay? We're gonna keep on going. We're gonna switch from I1 over to I3. I3 is gonna go through our 40 ohm resistor. So we're gonna have a minus I3 and R40. And we're going to be all the way back to the battery again. And by the loop rule, we should have this equaling zero. Okay, so our, our battery is going to add our potential difference. It's going to raise us up the cliff, whereas our resistors are going to use up that energy. And so our, our charges are falling down, falling down, falling down until they are once again back at that elevator or escalator, which is the battery. Down here, this, this was loop one. Let's do loop two. Loop two would say we start off with a 20 volt battery. We're gonna run through a resistance to 20 ohms, but that's gonna be I2. And that's gonna be a 20 right there. And we're gonna go through and also have a negative I3 and 40. And that's gonna finish us off for that to bottom loop and that should be equal to zero. Okay, so we have three unknowns and we have three equations. We could have four if we did the outer loop, which I'm not gonna do. But right now, let's try to solve these and get to some value of current. And once you have one of them, then you can start solving for the other ones. So easily, we're going to start moving these around. And let's just make a new equation, make some new sets out. So here we have 10 is equal to, and this is probably where I'm going to fast forward it, by the way. Um, I1, 50 plus I3, 40.
Okay, this is where we're gonna pick back up again uh, from the fast forwarding. So what I did was I took these main equations, I solved each one for I, this one for I1, this one for I2, plugged I1 and I2 into the junction rule equation, and then that allowed me to solve, solve, solve for I3. So I3, if I find the 1.2 divided by 3.8, is gonna give me a value of 0.3158. 0 0.3158 let's not forget our units these are amperes and from there if I know I3 then I can go back over here and say 1 minus 2 times 0.3158 should be equal to I2 so let's go ahead and double this and do 1 minus the answer and I'm gonna have 0 0.3684 amperes for I2 and then back up here I'm gonna say that I3 was, let's see, let's do one fifth or five minus four fifths times I3. I3 was 0.3158. Of course, I could have used the junction rule for that too to figure it out. And I get I1 to be ne negative, uh oh, 0.526. Okay. So what does that tell me? Let's double check to make sure all this is right. This is I1. I1 should be plus I2 is equal to I3. And I plugged in these two. Let's see if that actually does confirm or else I gotta make a new video. Uh, I2, I1, I1 is negative 0.0526. I2 is gonna be equals 0 0.36. 8, 4, and that's going to sum up, so 0.0526 plus 0.3684 better give me I3 of 0.3158, and that does check out. So that does equal I3, so we have successfully done this. So, good thing, I don't have to make a new video. Here we are. Loop rule, junction rule. Loop rule is that around a whole loop, the voltage, the potential difference should be equal to zero once you've gone through the loop. Junction rule says stuff goes in, equal stuff goes out. That will help you make some original equations, unique equations for our unknowns. We had this equation here from junction rule, these two from loop rule, combining all of them together using substitution. You could use elimination, whatever. Um, matrix, you can do that too, and that's always fun. And you get to your answers for at least one of them. And if you find one current, then you can find the other two pretty easily. So that will be the end of this video. Here you go.